chair recognizes Mr. Moskowitz for five minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, and you know, I want to thank the majority for finding the time to fit this hearing in between attending former President Donald Trump's memorial service to David Koresh just last week, who was a real advocate for young girls uh, in this country. Uh, so uh, my first question uh, to anyone on the panel is, do you think parents in this country, as they're putting their young kids into pajamas at night and they're tucking them in to bed, you think they're worried about public urination in Washington, D.C., or you think they're worried about sending their kid to school and their kid not coming home? As a father of two kids who packed them up this morning and sent them to school, I care about making sure they're coming home. Thank you. You know, I voted with the majority on the disapproval because I'm, I'm consistent. You guys want to talk about D.C. public schools and crime? I don't, I don't want to burst your bubble over there, but mass murder in schools is crime. That's crime. You want to talk about 1,300 cars being stolen? 550 people have been murdered in school. Who cares about the cars? What about the kids? No hearing for them. 338,000 kids have experienced gun violence in this country. The number one killer of school-aged children in this country, gun violence. How do you think for the parents who have had to bury their kids, who have had to decide what to put their kids, what kind of clothes to put their kids in when they bury them, or what kind of box they have to pick out for their child, or for when they come home and that room in their house is empty? What do you think about for the parents who have all their kids' stuff? and they don't know what to do with it. What do you think about the parents? No high school graduation, no college graduation, no wedding, no grandkids, no future. What do you think those parents who have buried their kids think that we're holding a hearing to talk about DC public urination? You know, speaking of crime, Republican on Republican crime, Former President Donald Trump held a rally in Waco, Texas with his Rasputin Ted Nugent. He said the number one national security threat to this great nation isn't Russia or China or DC crime, but is an 81-year-old slip and fall survivor in Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. I, I'm just wondering if you know, we're gonna find time in between you know, some folks here attending the next rally to celebrating Timothy McVeigh if we're going to find time to hold a hearing on mass murder in schools. When are we having that hearing? We want to talk about crime and murder. Let's have a hearing on murder in schools. It's murder. Is there any, any question? I'll yield to anyone on this committee who disagrees that murder in schools is not murder. I yield. Will you, will you yield? Oh, I'll yield. Yes, please. Yeah, I was, when I was in 11th grade and Joe Biden made our schools gun-free school zones, one of the students in my school brought three guns to school, and our entire school went on lockdown because he was the only person with a gun. There was no good guy with a gun to protect us kids at school. You want to know why the shooter is dead in Nashville, the trans shooter? You want to know why? Because a good guy with a gun killed that woman. She identified as a man. She was mentally ill probably taking hormones, and she went in and murdered children and adults in this Christian school in Nashville. So if you want to have a good talk about schools and protecting children, we need to talk about protecting our children the same way we protect our president, we protect our celebrities, yeah. we protect Re reclaiming this building. My time. Okay, Th I'll yield. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, there are six people that are dead in that school, including three children, because you guys got rid of the assault weapons ban. Because you guys made it easy for people who don't deserve to have weapons, who are mentally incapable of having weapons of war, being able to buy those weapons and go into schools. I voted for SROs in my schools in, in Florida after Parkland. We have SROs on every school. Did the good guys with the guns stop six people from getting murdered? No. But you know what? AR-15s, you know seen what those bullets do to children? You know why you don't hunt with an AR-15 with a deer? Because there's nothing left. And there's nothing left of these kids 
when people go into school and murder them while they're trying to read. You guys are worried about banning books. Dead kids can't read. Gentle lady yields back. Uh, chair recognizes Mr. Moskowitz for five minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. This is an important topic, and we, we do need to get to the answers of why the Afghanistan withdrawal uh, did not go according to what the experts in the Pentagon and elsewhere thought. We need to know why there were intelligent gaps. We need to know how that happened. We, there are lessons to be learned so they're not repeated, so that other soldiers, other Americans, men and women, don't wind up in the same situation. I want to remind everyone, we had soldiers die over 20 years of the war, not just in the withdrawal. So this is just as much about them as well. And it's an important topic, and it's something I think the American people want to know and want examined. Um, and we have to make sure that we improve our military through oversight. But you know, you know, this committee, who says it's an important topic, you know, we're 100 plus days into the next Congress. And this committee thought that before we would talk about the Af Afghanistan withdrawal, they thought it was more important to talk about Twitter first. And not only did they think it was more important than the Afghanistan withdrawal, they thought it was more important to talk about the hiring policies of the Biden administration. They also thought it was more important to talk about a laptop that was found at Radio Shack before the Afghan withdrawal. You know, they thought it was more important to talk about the D.C. government and public urination before the Afghan withdrawal. And so I know this is a serious topic. But just look at the hearings we've had before this one. And so it's tough for us on this side of the aisle to accept that this isn't a serious hearing. This was a 20-year war. It was started by President Bush. You remember President Bush. I know many of you have disowned him because he disagrees with President Trump. But four presidents, 20 years of good decisions, 20 years of bad decisions. You don't want to examine 20 years. You only want to examine, like, the last week. You know, when marriages dissolve after 20 years and they get in front of a judge, they don't just say, you know, everything was great until the last week of marriage. It's crazy. President Trump invited the Taliban to Camp David around the anniversary of 9-11. What? Like, are there any questions about that? Trump released 5,000 prisoners, many that included terrorists, 5,000 Taliban prisoners, many that included terrorists. I, I thought, uh, Mr. Sopka, you said that it was Secretary Pompeo who negotiated that release of the Taliban prisoners. Is that correct? That is my understanding. It may have been somebody else with him, but I remember that. No, fair enough. And because this committee has amnesia, as we've shown on our COVID debates and other debates, who did Secretary Pompeo work for again? This is a never trick question, isn't it? It is. Uh, I think uh, President Trump. Okay. Can you imagine, for a second, you don't have to answer this one, if Joe Biden had released 5,000 Taliban prisoners, many of who probably wound up in Kabul that day, can you imagine what these folks would be doing? I, I mean, I, the heavens would open for them based on based on that. I mean, it would be unbelievable to watch. But they have no questions and never had any questions. And many supported the release of these prisoners. No, they don't want to know what effect that had at all on the fall of Kabul. No, don't look at that at all. Only look at the fact that it happened during a Democratic administration. You know, I'm even hearing some of my colleagues say that they can't get information out of this administration. It's ironic when those same colleagues didn't comply with subpoenas, now complain they can't get information. That's the problem with this place. You, 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 it's not serious. This is no different than COVID. You guys only wanted to talk about COVID 
under the Biden administration, COVID was a three-year issue. And so I'll end with this, Mr. Chairman. It, it was accused that the Democrats don't want to quit Trump. We'll quit Trump when you quit Trump. We look forward in a bipartisan fashion, quitting Trump together. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Chair recognizes Mr. Moskowitz from Florida for five minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Well, breaking news, the federal government has too much red tape, right? Here we go again. Not a serious hearing and actually looking at specific government regulation and red tape. Look at the name, look at the name of this hearing. It doesn't say executive branch red tape or federal government red tape. It's titled the Biden administration campaign to bury America in red tape. This, this is their hearing. Literally, just red tape with Joe Biden's name written on it. Just make it real simple for people. That's the point of this hearing. It's not about solving problems. It's about red painter's tape with Joe Biden's name written on it. And look what Joe Biden has done. Look, it's right there. Here's the proof. Professor Katzen, serious question. Was red tape invented by Joe Biden? No, sir. Okay, good. You know, my colleagues across the aisle used to be the party of smaller government, and I wish they still had credibility in wanting to shrink the size of government, but they want more government now. Government in women's bodies, government in the bedroom, government in the library, government in corporate investments, government in Disney World. You know, and all we want to do is go back to Trump. I mean, every hearing, it's like, ah, oh, just if we could just go back to what Trump did, you know, the loser of the 2020 election, the loser of the Georgia Senate races, the loser of the 2018 midterms. By the way, just to jog your memory, the Trump administration finalized more federal rules in the last year of its administration than any other final year of any presidency in American history, more than Obama. I know it's inconvenient timing, but perhaps we actually need more regulation with presidents taking nuclear codes and cuddling with them and showering with them in their homes. You know, I want to answer uh, the representative's question on ATF and pistol braces. Has that ever happened before? Well, in fact, yes. It happened under the Trump administration. With Trump's ATF, they banned bump stocks. Bump stocks were legal, and then they weren't. The Trump administration's ATF did that. By the way, good decision. People shouldn't be able to turn guns into automatic weapons. Let's not forget that some of our colleagues, you know, went on camera when Sasha Baron Cohen got into their office okay. and said that they think kindergartners should have guns. We, we heard the, that this is all about big corporations, that big corporations now like regulation. Well, by the way, just a little public service announcement. If you're mad at big corporations, you don't have to take their money anymore. That's not like a mandatory thing. By the way, Professor Mulligan, you, you brought up Operation Warp Speed. I just wanna give you an update on that. Some of our colleagues across the aisle now um, don't believe that deregulation was very good. They've soured on the deregulation of Operation Warp Speed and actually believe that that led to bad outcomes. I don't agree but I just wanted you to have that update if you've been following the rhetoric coming from, from that side uh, of the chamber. We heard about the marketplace. Let the marketplace decide these decisions. Really? We had a whole hearing on ESG. That was the marketplace talking. Nope, they didn't like it. Government regulation, we gotta ban it. They wanna ban it, more regulation, because they didn't like what the marketplace had to say. Listen, regulations are hurting small businesses. They are. So let's actually work together and solve that problem. Paperwork for a mortgage is too burdensome. Let's make that easier. That should be the point of this hearing. How can we help the American people? How can we reduce regulation? Let's talk about specific ideas that we can do that together. I don't, no one here believes that we don't have enough regulation. No, there are things that we could reduce things to make it easier for the American people. By the way, we're going to have to remove red tape and shrink bureaucracy if we want to compete with China. We're going to have to do those things. But maybe Congress should work again. You know, you're, you're mad about all the rulemaking and the executive branch? It's because this place stopped lawmaking. We don't make laws here anymore because we're too busy doing this. I yield back. 
Chair now recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Donald. Gentleman yields back. Chair recognize Mr. Moskowitz from Florida. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and gentlemen, thank you for appearing today. Uh, thank you for being a public servant. A and there should be no retaliation against you as whistleblowers. Unlike my colleagues that said nothing and supported President Trump when he retaliated and fired Vindman uh, and escorted him from the building for appearing in an investigation. That shouldn't happen to you. But of course, they said nothing when it happened to other people. We heard a lot about the Bidens, the Bidens, the Biden family, Biden associates, right? Bidens, plural, the S. What does the apostrophe mean? But not Joe Biden. Didn't hear a lot about Joe Biden. Why? Because he didn't do anything. This has nothing to do with him. You know, my colleagues talked about foreign countries, you know, foreign entities trying to make it all scary for the American people. Of course, President Trump got $5.4 million from the Chinese while he was president because they were leasing space in Trump Tower. He goes out and air kisses President Xi. Totally perfect. Jared Kushner gets $2 billion from the Saudis, even though he oversaw Mideast peace. Totally kosher. Ivanka Trump, you know, she's doing business with the Chinese while she's working in the White House. Totally beautiful. Right? Why do I bring that up? They want to say you have credibility. The problem is they have none. They have no credibility. And because you're here at their behest, their lack of their credibility questions your credibility. Not because of you personally, but because of what they've done over the last several years. So the chairman says you're credible. You want to know actually what they feel about you? People like you who work in government. I got pages of it. It goes on for years. But you know what? I'll just read a couple of adjectives. Trump has called people like you so-called whistleblowers, fake whistleblowers, partisan people, political hack jobs, scams, frauds, traitors, cowards, spies, losers, clowns, thugs, puppets, unelected bureaucrats, the swamp, and my favorite, the deep state. By the way, you members of the deep state? You members of the deep state? Did you stop paying? It's a rhetorical question. It, <laughs> Did you stop paying your deep state dues? You did not attend the latest deep state meeting? Is that why you're, you're not in the deep state? I can't tell when they want people like yourself to be in the deep state, not in the deep state, depending upon what the deep state is saying. Again, it undermines their credibility. It undermines government. It undermines the Americans' trust in government. It undermines our institutions. And throughout all of this, for years, four years of it, they said nothing. And now, you know, in an effort to own Hunter Biden, okay, they're assembling nude photos of him, right? Having some intern have to sit in a room and blow up these photos and put it on poster board and figure out, oh, which ones are beyond the pale. Mr. Shapley, you, you said that the DOJ was slowing down the investigation. Uh, but some of that happened when President Trump was president, and, and I found it strange that when my colleague tried to ask both of you these questions about when your perceived slowness of this happened, you all struggled for a period of time to admit that it started under President Trump. Was President Trump directing that DOJ to slow down the investigation? I, he wasn't, just like President Biden isn't now. So if there's any perceived issues with DOJ, it's with DOJ, it's not with the president. Mr. Ziegler, you said no one's above the law regardless of political affiliation. Do you think the president's son-in-law, not as an IRS agent, as a person, do you think the president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, who worked in the White House, couldn't get security clearance until the president made it happen, was put in charge of Mideast peace, and with no investment experience got $2 billion from the Saudis? You guys made a lot of noise today about $17 million, but what about $2 billion? Do you think as a person that should be looked at? Sounds a little strange. Congressman, thank you for that question. Given the statute, I am limited to my testimony. I understand. Today. I got it. But think about it. Two billion dollars from a foreign country that he was put in charge of their policy while he worked in the White House. They got no questions about that. That's it's totally great, totally wonderful, right? You know, Joe Biden has been in Washington for almost 50 years. We didn't hear about Hunter and just until like a couple of years ago. Why? 
because it's, it's a pay attention, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, like the Wizard of Oz, right? Donald Trump is in so much trouble, and they can't save him. But what they can do is they can spend taxpayer money and all the time while they control these hearings to convince the American people that somehow Joe Biden has done something wrong, but there's no evidence. None, zero, zilch, nada, zippo. And you know how I know that? Because they couldn't even bring up their own impeachment. They had to bury it in committee on immigration, not on this topic, right? There are members of this committee that filed articles of impeachment, didn't bring it up for a vote, buried it in committee. Again, not on this topic, because there's no evidence on Joe Biden. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Chair recognized Ms. Bobert from Colorado. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it's your lucky day. What a day we are having here, isn't it? Right? I mean, listen, I, as a former director of emergency management, I know a disaster when I see one. I mean, by the way, you don't, don't, you don't believe me, just, just ask Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon, your guy, just went on and said, you know, perhaps... Whose guy is Steve Bannon? Yeah, well, you, you know who Steve Bannon is. Uh, perhaps, Steve Bannon just went on and said, perhaps the Republicans shouldn't have started with a witness, he was talking about Professor Turley, who was going to say right off the bat that there wasn't an impeachable offense. He's, he, I quote, he says, perhaps we should have put him on the maybe list for one of our witnesses. Hmm. So your other witness, Ms. O'Connor, gave a complete recitation of the last nine months, eight months of these hearings. She went through some of the greatest hits that have come out right, everything that has been presented, you know, both in these committees that we've been having, on TV, all of the evidence that you guys have been presenting over the last eight months, all of that together, and what does Professor Turley say? It says everything we know at this juncture doesn't rise to the level of impeachment. Boy, that is awkward. I, I mean, I, look, I, it's like political impeachment malpractice. But look, let's, let's go back at some of the previous comments that my colleagues have given. So the chairman, and I have a slide, the chairman goes on Hannity, right? You guys all know Sean, you, you, you appear with him on Fox News all the time, right? And Hannity asks a softball question, right? This is a total softball. Do you believe that this is now officially the Joe Biden bribery allegation? And do you believe you will be able to prove it? The chairman should have just said yes, but nope, he says hope so because he doesn't have any evidence, couldn't say yes, right? Next slide, please. Then we, have, then we have Senator Grassley. Grassley says what we all know out loud. We aren't interested in whether or not the accusations against Vice President Biden are accurate. Chuck, we know. We know you're not interested in, in the truth. Next slide, please. And then Donald Trump, you know, he's giving it all away. We know he doesn't, he likes to show his cards. He says, I think had they not done it to me, perhaps you wouldn't have it being done to them. And this is going to happen with indictments, too. So, you know, Donald Trump, the tough guy, right? He, what is he saying? He's teaching the lesson we all teach our kids, right? If they do it to you, go do it back. So look, you know, look, we're all appearing now in the world's worst acted TV drama, right? It's been picked up for a second season, the real House Republicans of oversight. You know, perhaps the material is so bad due to the writer's strike. Uh, I, I mean, how many Republicans, Freedom Caucus members, part of the chaos caucus have said there's no evidence to impeach Joe Biden. Uh, and again, of course, we know it's not about the evidence. Why? Here is a list of all of the articles of impeachment that have been filed by my colleagues, some that are on this committee. When was the first article filed? It was filed in January of 21, two weeks after January 6th. So before we had a single hearing, before they went through this myriad of fishing they were filing articles of impeachment. Pr Professor Turley, you said this doesn't rise to the level of impeachment, and you said they shouldn't prejudge. Well, here's a list right here of every single member, many on this committee, prejudging. They're filing articles of impeachment. COVID, Afghanistan, Hunter Biden, and they're all one-upping each other in the Donald Trump Friend Olympics, trying to get invited to the sleepover at Merrill Largo. Oh, I filed articles of impeachment against Merrick Garland. No, I filed articles of impeachment against Kamala Harris. Okay, it's, it is ridiculous, but this is what this is about. Let me show you, it's a simple board, right? So all other presidents in the United States, 50% of the impeachments. Donald Trump, the other 50. Donald Trump has half of the impeachments in American history. 
But you know what? He's got 100% of the indictments. 100% of all indictments. Zero for the other presidents. Listen, I, let me do it another way. I want to channel my inner Tim Russert. So let me go to the board, right? And I don't have Florida, Florida. But Donald Trump, impeachment. Oh, how many impeachments? We got two there. How many indictments? We got four. How many for Biden? Zero, zero. Donald Trump is right. I'm, he's sick of winning. He's just winning, running away with it. And that's why we're here. We're here because of math. That's what this is about. They can't save Donald Trump. They can't take away the two impeachments and the four indictments. But they can try to put some numbers on the board for Joe Biden. But the problem is when you sling mud, you got to have mud. And they just don't have anything, Mr. Chairman. So look, I, 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 we get it. We know why we're here. That's why they say the Biden family, the Bidens, James Biden, Joe Biden's dog commander. But, but not Joe Biden. Never Joe Biden. So when are you going to have the vote on impeachment, Mr. Chairman? What are you scared of? Call the vote. Come on. If you all think there's so much evidence, we're here. Call the vote on impeachment. Impeach him right now. I dare you. Gentlemen, time's expired. Chair number. Thank you, Mr. Moskowitz. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Appreciate the conversation. In 2022, the Anti-Defamation League said there were 3,697 anti-Semitic incidents in the United States. That was a 36% increase from 2021, just a year before. <clears throat> I think it was an excellent decision by President Biden to elevate the position of the head of the Special Envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism uh, to an ambassador at large. You know, when my Republican colleagues cozy up to neo-Nazis and the Proud Boys and white supremacist groups. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I find that offensive that the gentleman would make a broad statement like that. And I think that he should back that up with any individual, but not a broad group. That would be inappropriate for me yep. and untrue. That don't worry, I'm getting to the part you'll like. Well, okay. I don't, perhaps you are. I find it <clears throat> offensive that you have used this forum. Sure, no problem. Donald Trump, Donald Trump had dinner with a Holocaust denier at his house. You want, you want more facts? Th then use that, sir. Sure, no problem. When my Republican colleagues support a president of the United States who's having dinner with a Holocaust denier at his house and they remain silent, silence is complicity. Uh, when, there are Nazi, when there are Nazis... Mr. Chairman, Mr. Sessions. I would like my time Mr. back. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, well, I'm, yeah, sure, I'm sure you'll get that back. Broad statements are inappropriate and are not worthy of this hearing. I, I know you're you in want, denial that he had dinner. I, 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 I was dinner. unaware of it. So for you to assume. That oh, I was national news for like it, a week. I, that, that matters not. not. Okay. What I'm trying to say, Mr. Chairman, yeah. is this hearing needs to stay very cordial and very much on the level. And attacks like this are exactly why our country is going through what we're going through. And Mr. Today, Chairman, there needs to be a, there needs to be a point of order, meeting. actually, in this. There's no point of Thank order. You, I, I, call, I called nobody out other than the the former president of the United States, Donald that Trump. That is not correct, sir. You referred to Republicans. Mr. Chairman, there needs to be a point of order, that please. Is, Mr. Chairman, I would ask that you please admonish the people of this subcommittee and that we are trying to make progress together. Mr. Chairman, there needs to be a point of order. Yeah, and I'd like we, my we, time back, Mr. We, we need a point of order. You, you will get your time back. We're not running the clock. Okay. If, if there's no point of order, just continue. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'll go back to what I was previously saying, is that when Republican colleagues, not all of them, but some Republican colleagues cozy up to neo-Nazis and the Proud Boys and white supremacist groups. Mr. Chairman, but, I would sir, like for wait, you to wait. please. Sir, there's no point wait, of order here. A point of order. I, I know this okay. is uncomfortable, but I, I, wanna, I wanna get through this. So it's just a paragraph, and, and we'll be fine. So, so much for free, free speech. When uh, some of my Republican colleagues cozy up to neo-Nazis, Proud Boys, and white supremacist groups because they are their voters, and when President Trump hosts Holocaust deniers at Mar-a-Lago, sometimes we hear silence from our friends uh, on the right. When Nazis are holding rallies in the streets, 
when mass murderers go into synagogues or grocery stores and have Nazi symbols or anti-Semitic dossiers under white nationalism or Christian nationalism, we actually don't hear silence, we hear denial. But don't worry, I wanna make this committee bipartisan because this is a bipartisan issue. Anti-Semitism is bipartisan. And there is plenty of bipartisan silence of what's happening to Jews in this country on the left. Gas the Jews, kill the Jews, glory to the martyrs, celebrating Hamas killing, killing of innocent people at GW last night, my alma mater. Glory to the martyrs, glory to the people that raped women, that killed babies in their cribs, glory to those people. Uh, bring back Hitler, Jews are not wanted. No wonder the Germans killed them. Zionism is a mental illness. No wonder why Hitler wanted to get rid of them. Fuck the Jews. Posters of children hostages being pulled down all over the country. Swastikas coming back, not just at rallies, but people are just wearing them. Cheering in the street after rape, killing babies, using rape as a cause of resistance, burning people alive like they did in concentration camps to bring back the smell of burning Jews. We are constantly told that you can be critical of Israel's policies without being anti-Semitic. Except that's not what we're seeing in the street. We're not seeing from the progressive left them saying, you know, Israel. No, they're saying the Jews, right? We're constantly told, no, no, you can criticize a country's policies and positions. It's not about a religion. It's not about an elimination of people, except that's not what they're saying. That's not what they're doing. All being done in the cause of resistance or progressive values. And again, while it's not all of my members, silence from the progressive left. <clears throat> you know, I get it. Jews don't look like the usual victim. We don't look like victims. No, we look more like oppressors. And in social media, where everything is you know, binary, right? We don't like complicated arguments, right? And where facts don't matter anymore because folks like Elon Musk took away all of the guardrails and where anti-Semitism and racism and, and hatred is just breeding on social media. Um, it is no wonder why what we're seeing now scares the Jewish community because we have not seen this since the Holocaust. You know, it's because Jews are subhuman. That's, that's what it is. It is a double standard that is only applied to us and both parties are failing because you know what, <clears throat> each of them have no problem calling out anti-Semitism when the other side does it, right? The Republicans will call out the squad. Democrats will call out, you know, Republican members when they say, you know, Jews and space lasers. No, no, we have no problem doing it on the other side because that's easy, super easy to criticize the other side. No, but it is much harder to do it when it's within your own ranks, much harder to do it within your own ranks. That's when we see the silence. And so, I'll conclude, Mr. Chairman. You know, Jews have often wondered why it took so long for people to come to their aid during the Holocaust, why millions of people were slaughtered before people came to their aid. Now we know. Now we know why it took so long. And we also now know, because we see it in this country, in the streets and in the halls of Congress, we now know who those people are who wouldn't come to our aid now if that happened again. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. How are you doing today? Great. That's Thank good. you. <clears throat> you know, my Republican colleagues are so concerned uh, about budgets. You know, meanwhile, they can't keep the government open without Democrats, right? You know, they're so concerned about all of these things, but look what they've done the last, you know, 11 months in power, just utter and complete chaos. And the one thing they want to talk to you about today is this FBI building. Well, I wonder who has texted them and emailed them to talk about the FBI building. And the whole thing, that's it, you're here. 
about this FBI building. I mean, could that be that Donald Trump is telling them to talk about this FBI building because he's just so mad at the Department of Justice? I mean, it just, it's so transparent. And, and by the way, I don't know if you know this, we have a, a war in Afghanistan and a war in Israel. We can't get Israel foreign aid because the speaker decided to politicize it. But they want to talk about furniture. Oh, what is, that is definitely on the American people's mind, right? Right there with gas stoves and ceiling fans, other hearings we've had uh, in, in, in this committee. Um, the chairman mentioned something, actually. He said that the Biden administration can't have it both ways. And I agree with that, Mr. Chairman, um, which is why I'm happy to yield you some of my time today, Mr. Chairman, because I think you owe it to the American people to explain why you've gone on Fox News and told people that while the president was out of office, he, he had a loan with his brother, and in a way they were evading taxes. It has come out in the public that you also do business with your brother with potential loans. And so since you have framed that and manipulated that with the American people, that Joe Biden did something wrong when he wasn't in office, I just would like to know if you would like to use some of my time. I would love, I would love it. Okay. You retweeted that story. Completely false. I've never loaned my brother one penny. My father, who was a dentist, had some farmland. He died, and my brother couldn't afford he wanted to sell it, but he wanted to keep it in the family, so I bought it from my brother. That story that you tweeted also said I had a shell company. That is bullshit. You can come to Monroe County and look at all the land that is titled in that LLC. I think that the problem is, you know, they tried to get, the White House tried to get CNN to write that story. They went around and investigated all this bullshit that Ian Sams is trying to tell people that only dumb, financially illiterate people pick up on and said that uh, it was a shell company because it was an LLC. You're so financially illiterate that you think because something says LLC, it's a shell company. This company, which I financially disclose, has properties, okay? It manages thou over a thousand acres of land for hunting purposes. It owns different properties. I'm one of the largest landowners in my home area, okay? I went to the bank and I borrowed money and I bought that land. I didn't get wires from Romania, China. My family doesn't get wires, okay? Never loaned my brother money. Don't have an LLC. But you and Goldman, who is Mr. Trust Fund, Continue to try or, or claim, to or claiming my time. No, I'm re not going to give you your time back. We can stop the clock. Re you all continue to. You look like a Smurf here, just going around and all this stuff. Now, listen, Mr. Chairman, you no, have. No, I'm going to tell you no, no, something. No, no, hold on. If we're you if we're not on time, we you disinformation. You, you, you have you gone on TV and you said the president did something you illegal. You're doing stuff with your brother. The American people have the same questions. Why should, they believe, you? Why should they believe you? Why should they believe you? Why should they believe you? There's, there's a different rule for you the president. There's a different rule for you. Why should they believe you what you're saying, Mr. Chairman? Why? You go on Fox News and say loans you and deals are a way to evade taxes. We don't know that's what you're doing or not. We don't know. We have no idea. We're supposed to take your word for it. But when the president well, you've says already something, you've been proven a liar, Mr. Moskowitz. What's that? You've already been proven a liar. Today. Who's proven me a liar? You? Yes. Your word means well, nothing, Mr. Come, Chairman. Go to my hometown. There's a camera crew there today, an opposition research crew there today. Mr. To Chairman, this seems, to have gotten under your, this seems to have gotten under your skin. I'll pay I mean, for your I, ticket. I, I, I think the American people have lots of questions, Mr. Chairman, and perhaps you should sit maybe for a deposition. I, would, I will be questions. happy. I will sit with Hunter Biden and Jim Biden, and we can go over our LLC. That, that'll record. be great. I'll, I'll make sure the hey, ranking member do that. is happy let's that, do that. that you'll we'll sit, at a, sit at a table. Mr. Right. Chairman, I, I make a point of order What's your that, point? that we should return to regular order right. uh, for the benefit the, of the other members. The ranking member makes a good point. I'll reclaim my time, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up quickly. All I'm saying, Mr. Chairman, is you may have done nothing wrong. No, but you tweeted I'll, that I'll, I did. I'm reclaiming my time, Mr. Chairman. All I'm, there is a story out there 
right? Because we believe everything in the media. Like when you go on Fox News and say things and everyone says that they're true with innuendos and ifs and maybe the Biden family, the crime family, all this nonsense. But when it happens to you, it's fake news. And what I'm saying is there so should be the same. Like no, I'm proclaiming my time, Mr. Chairman. There should be the same standard. You said at the beginning of this hearing, the Biden administration can't have it both ways. Neither can you, Mr. Chairman. I yield my time back. Thank you. Chair now recognizes Ms. Uh, Tlaib.